In this video, I'll be showing you how to make a real quality supercapacitor with a spark gap overload so you don't burn them up. You can find the parts on my Patreon if you want to 3D print them, or you can, it's pretty easy to make yourself. All you'll need is a PVC tube. Aluminum foil, and five millimeter thermal laminate pouches. Don't get the three millimeter, don't, don't skimp out, get the five. You'll thank me later. Alright, well sit back and enjoy. First, take a section of twelve and a half inch tubing. And if you use my model files, this is one and seven eighths. To make your supercapacitor, you'll need six eight by twelve sheets of aluminum foil. Next, we'll have to round the corners of our capacitor sheets because the square corners can build up a charge and pop a hole through your dielectric material, and that is just no good. The easiest way, kind of, I guess, is to put it between two sheets of paper around the corners. ready for the next step. Now position your aluminum sheet in between the dielectric material. I usually try not to crinkle up the tin foil as much, but making this video that's okay. I usually try to space it about two centimeters from the top. Because when they're layered over each other, you don't want this to pop out the other end and short circuit and ruin your dielectric material. And once you have that in place, It's time to laminate. To laminate your capacitor sheets, make sure you have your laminator on the 5 millimeter setting. And just slide them through. To make sure they stay straight, it's good to keep a couple of heavy books on hand. And as soon as it comes out, Uh, 
plop them down and keep them flat. If you don't do that, they may curl and warp. it in between to keep them flat. Next, take your capacitor sheets and turn every other one in the opposite direction. Now you should have them layered so one is facing that way, one is facing that way, and so on. Roll them up. Slide them into the tube. This part is a little tricky because once they expand, you have to grab them from the other end of the tube and pull. You can usually get them most of the way in there, but then you'll have to center it. ready for some action. Once we have our capacitor in the tube, let's we'll simply trim off the excess pieces of aluminum. place on the end caps. Now the way I usually do this is I take a cone and I'll squish that nice and perfect. And you place on your end cap. And if you 3D print these, you just take some foil and attach a nut through the center with a washer. And this part here 
to hold the spark gap overload. And make sure you tighten that down real good before you attach it. That way it won't come loose later. Once you lock these down real well, take a little super glue with my patent pending napkin attached. So when you mess up, you can wipe it away right away. Put a little bit on the edges. See, oh, messed up. Oh, see, no, just kidding. And then place it onto the end of the capacitor. Do the same for the other end. You can see where this one was failing. See all the little holes where it was sparking? It wasn't tight against the aluminum, but it should be fine for now. <laughs> Add your glue. to the end. And when you're ready, you can position these so it's slightly small or larger than your spark gap. So if there's any problems, it'll overload here instead of burning a hole through your capacitor. Well, let's fire it up. To test it, we'll use something I made out of a mosquito racket. It puts out about 200 volts, has an optional fan. You can see the mosquito circuit in there. You just take off the main capacitor and then it puts out about 200, 250 volts DC. So we'll attach that. Plug in our power of 3.3 volts. Turn on my temporary power supply. And we'll charge it up. You see the little light should come on here. And the little switch. Oh, she's juiced. You ready for this? What's nice about this too is when you're ready to discharge, or if you need to check if it's discharged, you just tap your discharge stick across the terminals. Juicy. It's good. The beautiful thing about these capacitors are they're modular. I made this out of an erector set and put heat shrink tubing over it. And you can chain them together very simply by adding them to the ends.
and now we can see the difference that two of them make. This, I think, is lethal voltage, so always make sure you ground everything out and be very careful. Let's try it out. Get ready to change your pants and uh, volume warning. We now have it hooked up to the ZVS driver. And this is the kind of power you can get out of, this is almost industrial level. <laughs> Madness level, if you will. All right, prepare yourself. What? I also can't see. Huh? <laughs> I'll, I'll be right back. I'm back. And now you're ready to power your Tesla coil. Be safe. And always remember to discharge your capacitors when you're done. See that? That would not have been fun if you touched that. Be safe and enjoy. Volume warning. And always remember to discharge your capacitor.